Hello, everyone. We are back uh, with the Deciding Fest uh, with the talk uh, Networks in the Age of uh, Platform Capitalism. I'm Antonio Calleja Lopez. I'm a researcher at the Techno Technopolitics Group uh, of the Internet Interdisciplinary Institute of the Open University of Catalonia. And I will be talking today with uh, Gerd Loving. Gerd Loving is a well renowned uh, theorist, activist, and internet critic. He's the director and founder of the uh, of the Institute for Network Cultures, which is a center mostly focused on um, mapping, uh, documenting, and impulsating um, transformation in the in the social economy of uh, the so of the socioeconomic uh, of um, social media. And for the last uh, 20 years, he has made a, a number of uh, uh, you know key publications on these matters. Uh, from since uh, the 2000s uh, with uh, different uh, trackings of the critical culture of the internet with works such as uh, Zero Comments. And um, then uh, in the 2010s with uh, an, an analysis, a critical analysis of social media with works such as uh, Unlike Us. And, um, and uh, lately uh, in the last five years, uh, also with an analysis of the digital economy with the two readers uh, of the Money Lab. And finally, last year, he published um, Sad by Design. And that is going to be probably much of the focus of our uh, conversation today. So hello, Gerd. How are you? Yes. yes. Hello. hello. Uh, amazing, amazing to be uh, with, with you all uh, in Barcelona, Barcelona or um, not, not sure where we are, but somewhere, somewhere in cyberspace. cyberspace. I wanted to begin with, with exactly this question of, uh, you know, maybe paraphrasing the Joker, his question about why so serious, and actually ask you, why so sad? So why are we sad? Uh, what, what does your phenomenology and etiology, your analysis of the key features and also some of the key causes of current sadness, uh, you know, uh, what does, you know, whether you could make a, a brief recap of that? Why so sad is, is very simple because uh, we are stuck uh, on the platform. This is the problem. Uh, the internet has been uh, centralized uh, enormously, completely, uh, let's say, uh, contradictory to uh, everything we uh, kind of uh, expected and have been working on. So uh, we all find ourselves um, on the same uh, platform, uh, Facebook, Google, uh, etc. I don't have to um, uh, mention them. And uh, the sadness uh, arises out of a situation that we feel the potential, but we can't really uh, reach it. We are not uh, in control anymore. We depend on these platforms uh, for personal reasons, emotional reasons. We connect uh, to, through um, these platforms to everybody, to our friends, families, lovers, uh, uh, the people we uh, do not uh, do not know, um, so it's not only the the small circle, uh, but a, a much wider uh, one because uh, these platforms have been based, of course, on the previous social networking premise uh, that we make connections and so on and so on, and the sadness uh, comes, um, let's say, after. Uh, long, long days uh, being on Zoom. I've recently, uh, you know, published an essay on Zoom fatigue, uh, which is kind of a follow-up on what I've been uh, working on in Sad by Design. So we make long, long hours, and this exhaustion, uh, the waiting, but also simultaneously the the distraction uh, that is happening at the same time is completely wearing us out. And this, the sadness arises at the moment, kind of the short moments when we break down. We have two, two weeks ago, you made a distinction, uh, and also in the book, uh, between uh, sadness and other uh, moods or dispositions, such as uh, melancholy, but also depression. Can you go a little bit into that? Yeah, I think sadness is uh, not a disease. Let's not, um, you know, try to medicalize uh, it. Uh, of course, this was done, you know, for centuries or even millennia. Sadness was seen as a as a disease that people uh, suffered from, and only in the mid late nineteenth century, 
uh, this uh, connotation uh, of melancholia um, uh, was dropped and uh, probably you know its position was uh, taken over uh, by much uh, more uh, clear um, psychiatric psychoanalytic uh, but also pharmacological ideas of um, of depression but i am not in favor to see the the current let's say techno sadness or online sadness as a as a disease because uh, it's building in the platform and it's a rather mild thing that we all kind of uh, co are confronted with huh? uh, but uh, it's, it should be really distinguished from very very heavy forms of suffering such as uh, depression uh, we have a question by Pau Parals, who is a collaborator of, of uh, the CDIM, uh, who uh, posed the question whether um, part of the problem is uh, the ways in which social media shape engagement. Uh, and then he, he focuses especially how, the, how this uh, new emerging model of economy, which is behind this uh, creation of sadness, can, has, may have been inspired by people such as uh, uh, BJ Fogg, uh, especially his work on the, uh, a behavioral model uh, for persuasive design, so mm -hmm. that digital products can be designed to change people's uh, beliefs and behaviors. And then also the work of uh, James Russell, uh, especially concerning the circumplex model of affect, and that mm -hmm. maybe uh, not only sadness, but also anger is, is the oil. And then he makes finally the question of, do you think that this sadness may be related or inspired by these studies? Well, uh, let's not overestimate the role uh, that academics are playing in Silicon Valley. Uh, this is uh, simply not the case, but we should never underestimate the influence uh, in, let's say, the last five to ten years of uh, behavioral psychologists, right? And they don't, they don't necessarily have to be academic. Yeah? Of course, you could say, okay, their ideas are coming from somewhere. Uh, they um, they all have their uh, BAs, MAs, and uh, PhDs. Yes, they do have an academic uh, background, but uh, we also know Silicon Valley as a deeply anti-intellectual place. So we should be really careful uh, to make direct connections between intellectual concepts and research and uh, the code that is being produced there. That indeed, uh, you know, is um, the cause behind uh, this uh, sadness. Because uh, why is it occurring? Because what it tries to do is it tries to keep us on the platforms as long as possible so that uh, we are exposed to all these ads uh, uh, for uh, a maximum amount of time, right? So the, the, the profit maximization is a, is a direct driver of uh, all this right not some studies not affect not uh, yeah and what we see is that uh, the these um, uh, behavioral scientists are somehow you know operating as whisperers this is how i see their role they whisper uh, the coders of google facebook youtube and so on and so on and tell them hmm, advise them and their advisors let's say to the emperor yeah uh, so, uh, and they advise them how to maximize uh, the, uh, the attention, how to keep people coming back. Uh, and I've described that in my, uh, in my essay. Um, and uh, for instance, uh, the whole uh, WhatsApp uh, architecture, right, is completely built up for us to, uh, every two minutes, we want to go back, we want to see, uh, if our friend, our lover, our uh, business relations uh, is answering, right? So this this uh, dependency uh, is 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 constructed, hmm? and um, uh, and of course we, we all know that uh, another internet architecture is possible. You know, we don't need this, and it, it's got nothing to do with some kind of European idea, you know, of uh, online romanticism. 
it's i'm not saying you know by being more in the forest or on the beach yeah uh you know we will sort it out no this is not the point the point is really that we should disarm you know take the toys away from the boys this is very very important yeah and you know and we can still con uh, communicate and we have uh, so many possibilities to communicate with each other right uh, we just don't need the addiction we don't need the depression so um uh, the other day you were uh, in the conversation we have two weeks ago and also in the book you stressed this need of first uh, dwell and meditate on the sadness but my question and, and then you you, you finished your conversation last uh, two weeks ago also uh, calling from not res a response from anger but rather a reinvention mm -hmm. of the social and mm -hmm. uh, my question now would be what are the key steps uh, that you see from for that transition what is needed at a more of a you know if you want a, some sort of general theory of social transformation today uh, in a very schematic form. Sure, of course. Well, I think that that is lying really in um, giving people back the tools for self-organization. The, the problem with the social media as they are right now is that they refuse, categorically refuse, to give people tools for self-organization. Yeah? They give uh, us ample opportunity to respond, to react, to comment, to go crazy, to uh, become very, very angry. Huh? But uh, this will not lead to uh, forms of networking and, uh, and ultimately self-organization, right? Because we know that from the moment people start to, the self, uh, to organize the, themselves, they leave the platforms, right? This is very obvious. Uh, so, so it would be uh, Facebook would be mad uh, to uh, provide that uh, to us, right? Because if you do it properly, uh, you don't you you'll find out uh, overnight that you don't need Facebook anymore. Hmm? So, um, yeah. So the the key question there uh, is uh, access access to tools which is a very strange <laughs> idea because this phrase is of, of course uh, you know a 1970s uh, uh, phrase exactly from uh, from california right uh, at the time mm, when um, uh, in the 70s it was of course uh, still uh, ruled by um, uh, the hippies we need access to tools again huh? and we need to leave the platform so uh, in the book and also in, uh, I think that you, you point out how the perpetual now is somehow uh, using also quoting Bifo, is uh, cancelling, uh, slowly cancelling the future. And, mm -hmm. and, and looking at, at the essay, I saw, I was wondering if it's, if what is there is also a cancellation of the past. And uh, for, exa for example, when you analyze the difference between techno sadness and melancholy, melancholy as a kind of affection that connected us and can never leave the past. But also even the present itself, that the present, as a, also in the double sense of uh, something that is present, but also something that is a gift, has been, and that's also something that has a duration that is connected with the past and connected with the future, has been also strolling, or stolen from us and reduced to a perpetual now, which is neither future, neither present, neither past, or that so annihilates. Yeah, or, or neither, um, you know, a real form or a higher form, let's say, of presence. Uh, because exactly. remember, the present uh, also has a, a quite a specific, let's say, uh, spiritual uh, form, right? Where if you do um, uh, yoga or meditation or whatever, right, you can reach a higher state of presence. Hmm? But of course, <laughs> there's uh, nothing uh, like that is uh, is meant uh, here, right? Uh, and that's why, uh, yeah, I, I like uh, this. Um, a uh, kind of new form of flatness because the perpetual now is is really quite flat right it's something again exactly. uh, you're there but um you, you try to for instance uh, we all we we all do, do still do that and we try for instance uh, we try very very hard to uh be updated <laughs> 
but <laughs> the minute we we feel that uh, uh, we're there and we've we've done all uh, the social uh, media platforms and email and and you name it, right? Uh, we feel a certain satisfaction because we think, okay, now we're up to date. <laughs> but then we go back and we find out, gee, uh, yeah, even in the ten minutes uh, I, I was there, I, hmm? I've already missed so much, right? And this is kind of the the um, existential panic that uh, then um, starts to really, um, you know, become part of you. But the, and even you know, if for many, become part of our uh, bodily um, existence, right? Because all these processes that we did de de describe here have got nothing to do with data centers or big data or um, social media, right? They <laughs> become yes. part of you. They start yes. to live in your body, right? And we we all sense that. And this is. Um, uh, really, when we're talking about uh, presence, uh, we, we really also uh, should focus more on on the bodily aspect of uh, of it or the lack of it, for that matter. Exactly. So actually, I was thinking in at least three suggestions that you make uh, throughout the book. One is with relation to the past. You mentioned melancholy. With relation to the present, maybe something like you were mentioning now, like meditation, but also. Uh, this idea of tech freedom that you propose that somehow echoes, I think, uh, the notion of Gelassenheit in Heidegger, this uh, being with the tools but not being, a, a, you know, colonized by them, not being a, a servant to them. And then especially also regarding the future, you speak of imagination, of building a counter, a counter hegemony of imagination as a key condition for reopening the future to this future that has been cancelled by uh, the perpetual now. Uh, so how do you see the role of imagination? And also, especially a very provocative mention, uh, you know, like a suggestion that you make is that we should not be looking so much at lawyers or even digital rights, but rather about new radical imaginations of the future yeah. and maybe looking into art as one of the key ways of uh, reopening this future. Yeah, indeed. For imagination, for me, is always um, uh, social imagination. Uh, so it's not just uh, your personal ability to imagine some uh, other world, but uh, this is always done, uh, you know, in dialogue and together with others. So I think, uh, and for me as well, there, as you already addressed, um, this imagination, this social imagination is uh, really in essence an, an aesthetic uh, experience, even I would say an aesthetic pleasure, because uh, because then, when you are with others, you're really uh, you know drawn in, and uh, so the aesthetics pl is playing a very very uh, important um, important role here, also um, as an indicator uh, to uh, find a way out uh, out of our uh, you know daily misery uh, in which uh, we feel uh, we, we cannot uh, keep up we're stuck and we're stuck you know even even now in a very very profound way of course during COVID, um we are told you know to stay put we we are uh, we we cannot even uh, go out uh, many europeans uh, at the moment cannot even uh, you know leave their uh, their house uh, so um we are uh, literally uh, for a certain period at least under house uh, arrest so and, uh, so, sorry yeah sorry, sorry and to interrupt. talk about uh, yeah i i like i loved your uh, reference to um heidegger and i think there's something in it but um these are you know in my understanding uh, a quite poor um let's say individual survival techniques and they're necessary and uh, that's why we go back to Heidegger and read it in moments of despair. Hmm? But uh, yeah, um, you know, uh, even uh, when I think of a, a term, for instance, like mastering the social media question, like, okay, but you know, I really uh, don't want to do that on my own. And I think that I will, as a, as a person, you know, I will fail, you know, I will absolutely fail 
right? So uh, the idea uh, the slow, that you, we can also find in the, the work of Peter Sloterdijk, for instance, yeah? um, you know, the social media are way too strong uh, to suggest that the, the individual can simply master this environment, right? Maybe at some point we w we thought, you know, that over time as they mature, that we would be able uh, to do that. But this has really proven um, the wrong strategy. So in that direction and digging further into the question of the future, uh, I think there are two key ideas in sub by Design. One is that of stacktivism. And I would like to really mm -hmm. you to articulate that idea, which is a concept that I think uh, you have coined. Uh, and then uh, the, as a practice, as a key practice uh, for the future, and also the notion of the horizon of the commons and the minimal commons mm -hmm. as you see them. Yeah. Maybe you can explore in detail these two notes. They're related, of course. <laughs> yeah, stacktivism uh, just means that we start to see uh, the relationship between uh, the different um, uh, levels. Uh, our, uh, uh, you know, daily life in in the, in the, in the locality, in the city, uh, somewhere, wherever we are, um, we see the, the digital culture that surrounds us. And then we go up and up, right? We go uh, on more more abstract levels of network architectures, of protocols, uh, data centers, uh, global connectivity, and so on, right? Th this is kind of a stack. But what, what stacktivism is trying to do is trying to show that um, uh, you know we have possibilities to act and to change, and we need to uh, on all these uh, different levels. So we we cannot just say what is often said. You know we will find a, a local solution. For instance, in in the in the current network architectures, yeah, this might be a, a good idea, but uh, very very likely you're not going to be able to change much, and uh, you will only change you know some yeah individual behaviors at best uh, and this is why the the stacktivism is if you want you know it, it's kind of let's let's be vulgar um you know it's kind of a new hegelian uh, idea namely that uh, we should really uh, see that the internet is really a new totality that we're confronted with right and that we and, and that we should ha have this kind of um, 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 overall uh, approach, uh, and and that we start start to s make the connections between all these different levels. Uh, and so the stack uh, consists of these levels, and uh, this is uh, this overall um, strategy uh, is really uh, necessary. Maybe it's uh, some kind of abstract activism. And that is another term I thought of. But it's, a, it's an abstraction that will help us out, right? Because the local alone will not, uh, you know, will not do it. The, the interesting is that it's an abstraction, but it's also an abstraction of mediation which mm. is also a very Hegelian concept, in the sense that even if it is an abstract picture, it's a picture of how you generate the media, the mediations necessary to actually transform the world. It's not mere a general idea, but rather, you know, like a very specific vision of uh, a technologically embodied social transformation. Yeah, and also where we, we should understand that we should help and that we should be in direct contact with our engineers, right? And, and that we should reconnect let's say, this global engineering class huh? and bring them back to the communities, uh, to, uh, you know, the city levels, to even to national or European levels. Uh, come on, let's, let's uh, take the whole range, right? Um, and that uh, if we, and, and now I'm going to use that word, if we want to uh, build or rebuild that, uh, that commons, the, uh, the, in the, communication and information space as a commons. This is really uh, what we uh, should do. And I don't really believe that uh, regulating on the political and the legal level alone will do it, right? And this has been the, the, the EU strategy so far. Oh, there's a problem, 
will regulate it. Well, you know, and this is a really uh, sad to see. Uh, look at the GDPR. I mean, did that bring any any good so far? Did that resolve any of the urgent questions we're addressing here? Unfortunately, not. So regulation uh, uh, will not, um, uh, you know, do the job. So, uh, with regard to to the commons, I wanted to, whether you could dig a little bit in your conception, differentiated it from others. And, or, and also maybe to explore a little bit, you know, like uh, more broadly, what are some of the external and internal limits and problems that we could have ahead if we want to build such as, uh, you know, new forms of extractivism and also commonerism as you understand it. So first, yeah. uh, maybe a discussion um, of the comments. Yeah, oh, okay. Well, let's, let's start with an old one. Hmm? Let's start with, uh, you know, what a, a lot of people, um, let's say, 5, 10, 15 years ago were really concerned about, and that's collaborative um, and common uh, knowledge production, right? Well, we've kind of given up on that level almost entirely yeah, because we've been um, focused very much on the urgencies of the social media communication. But, uh, you know, not that long ago, uh, we were concerned with Wikipedia, with search engines, with, uh, yeah, and nothing uh, at that level has really been um, resolved. And if we're talking about a public stack or something like that, a public, uh, you know, digital infrastructure, hmm, I would, in fact, uh, be very, very interested to start at that, uh, at that level again to go back to that level and there's a very serious question for instance you know why has europe failed to build its own search engine for instance you know and th this is okay you can say okay well you know we we, we fucked it up and um uh, this um this is it um yeah but uh, we 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 still need it uh, we still need um uh, you know because um Search and searchability is a key, key question uh, in uh, how we want to resolve uh, the, the current situation because uh, at the moment we live under a regime of recommendation. And uh, yeah, because, uh, uh, and I don't want um, to continue uh, with that. Now, I don't, I don't want to say, you know, the, to return to the question of search and navigation, uh, you know, will be will resolve everything. But um, when we're talking about you know building or rebuilding the um, the the public uh, internet, the public digital infrastructure, this is a very concrete point where we can start, and very soon we can make progress. This is also beautiful. Because, uh, you know, we don't need five or ten years to build this. No, we can build it, I would say, almost overnight. And, and, and that because a lot of this stuff is already uh, there, right? Uh, and, and people have been thinking about this already for, for 10 or 20 um, more years. And so that's a very good thing. And we know from the Internet how fast things can be picked up. Huh? So we really can be optimistic there that uh, public infrastructures can uh, be a concrete solution and, with the, and that we don't have to wait 100 years for it to uh, be um, realized. Okay, so uh, with that final note, uh, let's hope that we do not have to, to wait that much and, and we actually succeed in our efforts to, to do so here in Barcelona, in Amsterdam and, and beyond. Yeah, exactly. I want to, sorry. And I want Berlin. to thank you very much for, for the conversation today. Look forward also to collaborate with the uh, Institute for uh, Network Culture. And thanks a lot again for the conversation today. Wonderful. Thank you so much and uh, hope to see you in Barcelona. So uh, I, now we will continue with the, with the next uh, presentation. Yeah. And uh, it will take uh, one, five more minutes. In five more minutes, we will uh, reconnect with the next uh, conversation. Thanks, Gerd. Um.